So Wednesday is day two of the Cheltenham Festival. Hopefully you've all had a few winners on the first day. Uh, we start at 1.20 with the Ballymore Novice Hurdle. Uh, the horse I like here, I've liked him all season, is Bob Ollinger. I was really impressed um, with his uh, run in, and winning the bumper last year. He's a really good hurdler. Um, his only defeat this year was to Fernie Hollow on his first start. Uh, Fernie Hollow a beat appreciating last year's bumper. We've seen how good that form's worked out. Uh, that was over two miles, probably a bit short for Bob Ollinger. He's two from two over this uh, sort of intermediate trip, including a grade one win last time out, uh, the Lawlers and Nace hurdle. Um, the horse he beat there, uh, I think, ran well behind Appreciate It on a previous start. So that form all sort of ties in together. Uh, 13 to 8 looks a good price. I'm quite keen to take on Brave Man's game here for Paul Nichols. Um, I think the English horses are quite far behind the Irish this year, um, but I will keep that one on side next year when he goes chasing. So uh, Bob Ollinger in the Ballymore Hurdle to kick us off with a winning favourite on day two. The second race is the Brown Advisory Novice Chase, formerly known as the RSA. It's a 155, and we've got the absolute banker of the week here, Monkfish. He's unbeaten over fences. He looked brilliant at the Dublin Racing Festival. Won the Albert Bar last time out. He's four to nine. He's short enough in the betting, but if you're putting any multiples together, he's definitely one that I think is a bank and you can throw him in. 2.30, we've got the Coral Cup. It's a handicap hurdle over two and a half miles. Uh, sorry, two miles five furlong. Uh, the one I like here is Blue Sari for Mark Walsh and Willie Mullins in the J.P. McManus silks. J.P. McManus had the winner of this race last year in Damned Company. Now, Blue Sari's an interesting horse, pulled up on its last two starts. Um, you wouldn't look at its form and think it's that exciting, but it has been running over a shorter distance than this. It's been running over two, mile, uh, two miles, this is two and a half miles. Um, one thing I would say about this horse is if you go back two years and watch the champion bumper with an Envoy Allen one, this horse was about a length behind it in second. It had Abracadabras behind it that day. He's running the champion hurdle since. Um, based on his bumper form, he should be a really good horse. A guess off here in a lightweight, in a handicap, 11 to 1 is a fair each way price. Um, you we're hoping he's going to show his potential finally. Uh, off his mark that he's currently at, I think he's probably got about a stone in hand if he can uh, realise his potential. Uh, we're on to the feature of day two on Wednesday. It's the champion chase. Obviously big news, Alciol's uh, not going to be running, which means Shaq and Passois looks a very short price favourite. He was brilliant at the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, but I'm a bit worried that he's never been to Cheltenham before. Will the hill, will the twisty turning of the track catch him out? I'm not too sure. He's 5-6, to six. he's definitely the most likely winner, but at that price I'm willing to, to swerve him. Um, I was amazed to find Willie Mullins has never actually won this race. Um, incredible, but he's got a very good chance this year. Uh, but we all thought that with Duvan, we thought that with Underso. So Willie Mullins has had odds on shots beaten in this race. I'm going to side with the second favourite here. Put the kettle on. Uh, it's another Henry de Brom head horse. It's three from three at Cheltenham. Core specialist. It's a mare, so it gets the £7 mare allowance. Um, nine to one in the betting is a good each way play. I think it'll definitely finish in the first three with, with the mare's allowance. Uh, it was beaten last time out at the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, but I'm willing to give, to give it that run. Won the Arkle here last year over course and distance. Um, as I said, he, he might win, but uh, a 9-1 to one is more than a fair each way price for me. At 3.40, we have uh, the cross-country race, uh, which uh, it looks a fascinating encounter. Uh, we've got last year's winner, Easy's Land, against uh, previous winner and Grand National legend Tiger Roll. Now, Tiger Roll's not been entered in the Grand National this year. This looks like it's been his target. Uh, but he's 11 now. He's not really shown any enthusiasm the last couple of times he's been here. Well beaten in this last year by Easy's Land. Uh, a shade of odds on, 10 to 11. I think Easy's Land is a good bet. Um, if he repeats the form of last year, he'll definitely win. 
He finished second in a handicap here on the cross country course, I think back in uh, December, November time. He was giving away absolute heaps and heaps of weight that day. He was giving a stone to I think the horse that came second, maybe more. Um, I think he's come across from France for this. They've, they've not taken that trip lightly because I know how hard it is at the moment getting these French horses across with with everything that's gone on with COVID and Brexit. So he's he's here to win. And I think at 10 to 11, Felix de Giles is a, a booking as well, which for me is a slight upgrade in the jockey. Um, so yeah, I, I, I will be siding with, with Easy's Land in the cross country. Uh, the next race on the day is the Grand Annual. It used to be the last race on the Friday, but it's been moved now here to 4.15 on the Wednesday. Um, it looks quite an open race to me. I was all over Sky Pirate until they've sort of ran him and ramped him up the weights a bit. Um, the other horse I like, Sully Dock's not in, so I've not really got a strong opinion on this race. Uh, but I think at the one that I've come down on is on the slopes uh, for Tom Cannon. Now he's 25 to 1. He's got some really good course form over two and a half miles. Um, I think Imperial Aura uh, finished a couple of um, lengths in front of him on his last start at Cheltenham. That horse is going to run in the Ryanair now after bolting up in last year's festival. Um, 25 to 1 is a good each way price. Uh, he's dropped down in trip to two miles. I'm hoping that can bring the best out of him because he's had a couple of runs uh, over two miles and he's won them both. Second run back off a of wind up, that should help. And he's had a little pipe opener on the all weather at Kempton, which um, I'm not sure how much that's going to help horses, but I, I think it should keep keep them fresh. Um, so yeah, 25 to 1 on the slopes. Um, fair enough each way price. And then I think we're on to the last race of the Wednesday. It's the champion bumper. And... Willie Mullins has got a great record in this. Um, he seems to have won it every year, or that's what it feels like. He's got the favourite again in Kilcrut, um, for the same colours, who own appreciates it, who absolutely romped home on day one. Seven to four, looks fairly short in the betting, but he was absolutely electric at the Dublin Racing Festival. He won by half the track. Um, I don't really know what to make of that form because a lot of people are saying that he went too hard too soon. Um, but he looks the real deal to me. Um, I know Tony Mullins was raving about him at one of the preview festivals last year, saying that he's a God-given servant, isn't he? Uh, so yeah, for me, Kilcrook, I'll stick with him, Paul Townend on board, obviously no amateurs this year. Um, and hopefully we can have a winning favourite in the champion bumper in the shape of Kilcrook. So that's all my bets for day two for Wednesday. Uh, please bet responsibly and hope you have a few winners.